Yo, I just watched the entire Microsoft conference uh, from E3 2016 in full, and uh, I want to talk about how I feel. Intro. Alright, so let's kick it off starting off with the Xbox Slim announcement. So, um, one major thing about this year's E3 that I feel is really that has really fucked it up is how there's like no excitement sort of like no there's like no surprises that's what I meant to say like no surprises because fucking everything got leaked it's crazy it's like there's no surprises all the all the rumors have just been true and honestly I highly doubt that all these leaks are actual leaks I feel like you know, the companies are doing this themselves to build up hype leading up to the event. But I feel like it's a good thing, but a bad thing. Because I guess I, I guess it probably does build up hype. But then again, it's like, like, it gets more people there. But people, in retrospect, don't feel as excited afterwards, you know? Um, let me set my water. So, yeah. And the Xbox Slim is one of those things. You know, it got leaked, that it was coming out, and uh, from my understanding, probably the specs are probably even right on it. Um, but, um, yeah, so that that's a thing. I think it's gonna be priced that as low as um, $300 or something like that. So, yeah, like it's not gonna be crazy expensive. Um, the, the console itself looks really good. Um, there's a new controller that's like a little bit smaller and stuff. I don't really know what they really change about the controller. Um, there's like a side mount stand so it can like stand up on the side. And the console is like 40% smaller or something like that. So, yeah, it's cool. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have any interest in necessarily getting one. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it doesn't have the power brick anymore, so everything's just in the chassis. Um, honestly, in my opinion, I feel like um, when you start stuffing everything inside, that, that just leads to the console having a higher percentage of a chance of overheating. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't want to risk that. So I'm kind of, you know, like people would be like, oh, we'll add the swim. Well, I'm gonna be like, well, I'm happy that I have the big fat Xbox one because that way I don't have to worry about it overheating with a power brick inside of it getting really hot because I play for hours and hours so yeah moving on um Phil Spencer also announced cross play or um play anywhere so basically it's the type of thing where it's like if you buy a game on Xbox or if you buy it from the Microsoft store you can play um the title in between Xbox and Windows 10 um, back and forth so on your personal computer or your laptop or whatever and back on your Xbox so I have the same save and everything um, with no additional cost uh, this is great news and I feel like it's news that should have like you know like this type of thing that should have been done years ago probably the Xbox would be in a situation where it's in now where it's not selling as much as they would like um, but, uh, yeah, so that's good news, honestly. Um, I could definitely see myself maybe utilizing that. Like, probably just, like, the sort of thing, like, I buy it for my Xbox, but I actually play it on my computer because my computer has better graphics. And these would probably be, like, single-player games only I would really do this with. And, you know, I could just enjoy the, the, the games that run with, uh, with better graphics and stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, not only that, they also announced like um, new customizable controllers. Um, Cortana's coming to the Xbox One. Um, they announced background music. I was so pissed when I found out the Xbox One didn't have this years ago. I like I've since forgotten about that, but I'm glad it's coming back because um, I don't want to listen to you know like I mean sometimes when I'm just playing a video game and I don't need to listen to the sound. I want to listen to my music, and I don't want to have to play it through my, like, like to play it off my phone, and I'm forcing my friends to listen to it. I just play it through my headset, so that's good now. I don't have to do that. Um, 
They've also announced a few other features. Um, they've, they announced the looking for a group feature um, in the Xbox community section type thing. It's like Xbox One is trying to dabble in having its own sort of social network for gamers. But that's the way I would best describe it. And um, looking for a group is one of the features in that. Um, I feel like that's great. Uh, they also have clubs now. So basically, like, you can have your Xbox clan. Except, it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, it's not necessarily like a clan. It's kind of like a Facebook group. Because there are some Facebook groups um, for gamers where, you know, like, you join. It says, like, it, like the clan or, like, the, the Facebook group would be, like, True Destiny Players. Because I, I think I'm part of that group. Or a group with a similar name. And, like, just random people from around wherever the hell all part of the group and you all share stuff with each other and if you're looking for help you can go on that group and look for help and talk to other players and stuff like that and so they're adding something like that to xbox they're also writing um adding arena which is basically like you can have like a tournament type thing that you host with your friends or a game developer can host a tournament through it and, and possibly like reward players and stuff like that so that's cool too so yeah, I, I can definitely see like me and my friends having some tournaments on Arena maybe. That'd be pretty dope. Um, I think I mentioned the new custom controllers. Basically it's like, you know, they're just allowing you to like spruce up controllers now. Kinda like um the Nike ID thing where you can um design your own sneaker. Um, you know, with this now you can design your own controller. So, you know I mean if I were to make one, I could definitely see myself getting a pink and black one. Like 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 primarily pink and with like black analog sticks and bumpers and stuff. I feel like that'd be pretty dope. Um, but it really depends how expensive it is. Like if it's about seventy dollars, then I would get that. Cause I'm probably gonna need a new controller for this fall anyway. This controller, I can just, you know, like uh, like I would just assume that something gonna just gonna start to break down within the next um, few months, probably over the summer. Um, and uh, apparently they said something about like Daisy coming to um, preview, and um, my friends, I have friends who are really, really into Daisy, and uh, this would be a thing that would make me try out the game, because it'll also have crossplay apparently with PC or something. All right, so moving on to actual game titles, right? Um, Killer Instinct is coming to, uh, I mean, General Ram is coming to Killer Instinct. That's pretty cool news. I don't really care about Killer Instinct. The game's like a clusterfuck to me. But yeah, that's something that's happening. Uh, my impressions of ReCore. The game looks interesting. I still don't really get it. Um, it's really pretty. I like the art style. The robots are cute. <sighs> but I don't get the point of it. So I don't know. It's not really on my radar too much. Um, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Um, Gears 4, yeah, let's go with that. Um, so yeah, th this is like the first game that they talked about having crossplay between PC and console. I don't believe competitive multiplayer is going to have that though. They mentioned like it, it just being co-op stuff, so maybe even Horde. So maybe you can play Horde, you know, with your friends um, if they're on PC at the moment. Um, but I, I don't think competitive um, online multiplayer is going to be allowed for that. Probably private matches will be allowed though. I can see that being the case. Um, um, I have a note here, oh, the, they're releasing, um, an Elite controller, uh, custom Gears of War 4 Elite controller, it looks pretty cool, but I mean, I don't ever see myself buying an Elite controller unless that price goes way, way, way down, so, yeah. Um, the Buzzkill, um, there's a gun, I, I think, I think it was called the Buzzkill, it's fucking cool, it's like, it, it, it like shoots like buzz saws. And they ricochet around the map and shit, and like slice motherfuckers up. It's kind of like um, a gun from Sunset Overdrive. I, for I forget the name of the gun, but yeah, the gun, the, the buzz kill is pretty dope. I fucked with it. Um, and just from my impressions of actually watching the story mission that they were playing, like it just like it looks really cinematic, but. I don't know, it just didn't have that same vibe, you know, I, I didn't feel that connection to the characters. I think, I think I'll just have to actually play the story, you know, these, these are all new characters, and it's gonna take some time for me to, um, for me to take to them, you know, and to really start to, 
um, care about them. Um, but uh, one character I do sort of care about, he's not my favorite, he appeared at the very end, and the character is Marcus Phoenix, old man Marcus Phoenix. And it's funny, he looks he looks way more badass as an old man than he did when he was um, younger. I didn't really like Marcus Phoenix to me. I liked everyone else in his group but him. He was, like, he was, he was always my least favorite, and it sucks because you played as him most of the time. Um, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, you know, I love all the other years' games. I'm pretty sure this one's not going to disappoint me. Um, oh, and one thing, can we just talk about Laura Bailey? She, like, works on Gears of War, and, um, she's the, she's the voice actress for Kate, and, uh, she's pretty fucking hot. Moving on, though, Forza Horizon 3. Forza Horizon 3, man. Get excited. But if you're like me, you won't, because you don't really give a fuck about racing games. But, what I will say, and yet again, Forza looks amazing in terms of visuals, it's probably the most accurate racing simulator in the world, but I, I will not be playing it. Uh, Final Fantasy XV. I saw the trailer for this before I watched the conference, and the trailer got me really hyped. It's a trailer, and it has like a, it's like, it's like a clusterfuck of fucking, um, like, random ass enemies. Like, Honestly, I don't know dog shit about Final Fantasy, especially for there to be 15 games and I call myself a gamer, right? Um, it's because, st stupidly enough, I thought they were connected in some way, so I just thought I was really behind and that they were milking a series, but no, it turns out I guess they're all like, they have nothing to do with each other. So, with that being the case, I'm interested in um, playing this one, but the, the trailer really excited me, but actually watching the on-stage gameplay kind of fucked with me, because the guy who was playing it was really bad, like, I'm not sure if he was really bad, but it seemed like he was really bad, because he kept getting hit, and I don't know, um, but one thing that did cheer me up, and actually had me in stitches, and like, that actually had me in stitches for about 10 minutes, honestly, I just kept rewinding it and watching it over, is, <laughs> is the motherfucking guy who announced it, I think his name is, um, Hajime Tabita? I think he's like the executive some shit and the dude can't speak English at all and it was so funny I think I might throw in a clip here see now that I did that snap I have to actually put the clip in so ladies and gentlemen from Square Enix game director Hajime Tabata and senior product manager Matthew Kishimoto hello everyone today I want you all to see and experience the world of Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. We are excited to show you the first ever demo on Xbox One. I will be played by Mark. It will be played by Mark. Take away, Mark. Thank you, Tabata-san. Yeah. Before we move on to the gameplay, I would like to explain a little bit about the demo we're about to show. Okay, assuming that I put the clip in, yeah, you just saw it, and it's fucking hilarious. Um, and no, I don't like making fun of people who... Okay, yes, I do. I don't give a fuck, this shit's funny, if you find it offensive, then fuck you. Um, moving on, The Division. This game is so dead to me, I'm sorry. I, I want to get back into it, though. I will say that. It's just two things that keep me out of it. One, the game is ashy as fuck. It was not advertised as being an ashy game, and it turned out ashy as hell. And two, I don't know where to start. I don't, I don't know what to do to get back into the game because I've been out of it for so long. I left when the um, when the incursions came because we all know the whole debacle with everyone glitching them, and then in turn everyone being super fucking strong in the dark zone. And I just, me and my group of friends didn't really want to um, glitch the fuck out of the incursion, so we just stopped playing. And, um, I, from my understanding, that, that whole shit storm has passed now. You know, they, they fix things. We have another incursion that's already out. The new DLC's coming out. And I kind of want to get back into the game, but honestly, I, d I have no idea where to start. Um, 
moving on. Uh, oh, Battlefield 1 looks fucking amazing, but I think I'm gonna make a separate video for that because it truly deserves it. Um, turning my page right here. Oh, Minecraft. Fucking Minecraft. <laughs> Um, I wanted to let you guys know that I thought that, um, Lydia Winters, because I'm reading this, you know, I'm going to read these notes that I wrote. Lydia Winters, whoever she is, and, and her, um, her in, involvement with, um, the development of Minecraft, well, she's thick as fuck. Like, that lady has some nice thighs, that's all I got to say. And, uh... Oh, and now apparently Minecraft's cool because you can play Minecraft on your phone and be playing with someone on Xbox and also be playing with someone on PC and someone on PlayStation and something, I guess. I guess that's cool. I mean, honestly, I would have thought that that would have been a thing by now. Like, come on, really? But whatever. Um, oh, and uh, VR and shit. Um, another thing is Tekken 7. Looks pretty cool. I mean, I like, I like Akuma. He's a, he's a really dope Street Fighter character, and that's pretty much all I got out of that trailer. Um, I'm definitely not buying the game ever. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Let's go to uh, oh, let's go to Halo Wars 2. That trailer was so nice, and I can't wait to watch all the cutscenes on YouTube when the game drops. Yeah, because I'm not a really an RTS guy. I'm going to play the beta. Actually, I might play the beta in a few minutes. Um, I, I've already downloaded it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to play the beta. If I find out all of a sudden I'm the biggest RTS fan in the world, then, yeah, I'll probably buy the game. But I doubt that's going to happen. Um, but what I did really love about the about the first Halo Wars game is that, um, you know, all the lore, because I'm a big Halo fan, in terms of just, like, it as a franchise... And um, the cutscenes are fucking dope, and I just can't wait to see them. So yeah, uh, Sea of Thieves. This game, this game, this game. I like the art style, right? And it just looks like a real nice time with friends. You know what I mean? Um, then again, what they did with uh, having like the, the way that they showed the gameplay, having those separate groups of people who didn't know that they were being put in the game with other people. Or with, or with um, other groups, um, that was really dope, and it made it really exciting, and it was honestly like a genius way of marketing the game, but um, I also feel like it's not too manipulative, um, I feel like it's pretty genuine of what your experience will kind of be. Um, I just, I'm just still really wondering what is the point of the game, like loot, you know what I mean, like what is the point of it, you know? Um, but I can definitely see the fun being had. It just, we need to see more of the game, that's all. But, um, before, you know, I get all, like, gun hole, like, oh, see a thieves, you know, like. But, um, the game does look pretty cool. I will, I will say that. It looks, it looks pretty fun. Um, especially if it's not going to be full price, like, 60 bucks. Like, if it's not 60 bucks, you know, yeah, I can definitely see myself buying it. Um, talking about another game like that, let's go on to Dead Rising. I've never bought a Dead Rising game before in my life. I played, I think, three, two, I don't fucking know, but it was cool, um, what I wanted to say about the game is that, um, it, it has a whole bunch of, like, fucking crazy ass weapons, and, like, ridiculous vehicles, and a shit ton of zombies, like, the last one I played or saw, I, I don't remember there being that many zombies, like, yeah, there, there was a lot, but, it, but this was, like, or fuck like this will fuck up your frame rate amount of like zombies like it was crazy um but anyway game looks pretty cool to be honest i don't know if i'm ever gonna buy it but it looks it looks like a good game uh and uh the last two the last two titles i want to talk about is um one scale bound that game looks like the shit i i'm still a little bit on the fence, right? But it just looks like a dope ass concept, you know. Um, my only concerns is, well, one thing going into this E3, I was worried to see if the game was gonna still look, look like, look like a fucking slideshow. Cause um, last E3, and oh my God, those frames were just so low. Um, 
this this time around when I saw um, from what I saw at the conference it didn't have any of those issues uh, another thing was like the customization of your character uh, it's it also like there's many options like that isn't the biggest thing ever but I was hoping that I can create you know like a reflection of me in the game but uh, if not I mean so be it um, I'm more I'm still interested in figuring out like you know the the, the like the motive of the game same with like Sea of Thieves uh, I'm wondering if this game is just like you know like a story driven game you fight monsters you beat the game you move on you know what I mean or is it because the thing is that they're really pushing towards this co-op aspect of it and with co-op games there's something about you know like there's something that keeps player retention you know it's something about keeping players around for an extended amount of time um like if that's the case then why why don't games like dead rising promote co-op you know what i mean it's like if and that's just a single player game where you play through the story and you beat it and you probably like some challenge missions and stuff like that 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 um that you can participate in once you beat the game you know, like if the game's like that, then I don't, I don't see why they would be um, promoting co-op so much. Um, so yeah, and um, moving on, this game low key got me fucking excited as hell. We happy few. The game looks so fucking creepy, bro. My skin was crawling watching this shit. It was just like, and like, if you know me, you know I don't fuck with scary movies. I don't fuck with scary shit. But this game, I think I will buy. It's just like. Just so fucking creepy that the concept just seems dope as hell. It's like you're in some like um what's the word? Like uh dystopia. And people take fucking drugs to make themselves feel like they're happy and everything's fine with the world. But your character like doesn't take his fucking meds and he sees the and he starts seeing the world for what it actually is and he starts getting really sad and depressed. And then this bitch snitches on you, he's like, Oh, you ain't taking no drugs to be happy. I'm calling the boys. And the fucking security come and they mad creeping you falling on the fucking steps and they beat your ass. And oh, it's. The game looks dope as hell. And honestly. Hey, let me look at this list again. Um, besides Battlefield, best game shown at the Microsoft conference, in my opinion. I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. Um, and the other thing is Project Scorpio. It was confirmed. Um, so if, yeah, apparently 4K gaming is on the way. I'm gonna do a separate video on this too. Why I, I'm like, I want to get the motherfucker when it comes out, but then again, it's like, is it really worth it? You know. Um, other than that, I'm gonna cut this video off here. It's already long as fuck. Uh, I see you later.